Welcome to Investor in the Family Radio, a podcast about learning to invest. My name is Brian Bain, and I'm your host. This week, we're doing something unique with the podcast, and then I'm offering a series of interview previews for interviews that will take place in the DIY Investing Summit next week, which begins Monday, January 23rd. And the summit is being put on a partnership between Seeking Alpha and Investor in the Family, and each one of these interview previews stands alone in its value, but it gives you a glimpse of what the rest of the interview may be like, as well as the rest of the summit, which overall has 25 interviews interviews from some of the top investors from Seeking Alpha. Registration for the summit is free for a limited time, so be sure and check it out at DIYinvestingsummit.com. That's DIYinvestingsummit.com, or you can check check out any of the links in the show notes or the article. I hope you enjoy this interview preview with Brett Jensen. If you were asked to give a state-of-the-market speech to U.S. investors going into 2017, what would your main points be? I think it's going to be a lot of 2000, like 2016. There's a lot of unknowns in the world. Uh, obviously, we have, you know, the rest of the development world is not growing at all, whether it's Japan or Europe. You have increasing amount of terrorist acts. Uh, you have Syria. You have no one really knows what's going on in China. And then, of course, domestically, you have a new administration, a new Congress. Uh, we can kind of guess what their priorities are going to be, but we're not really sure what their core focus areas are going to be in uh, the first 100 days. And we're not sure what they're actually going to be able to enact. Um, and we had a nice little rally off, off the uh, election on outcome, which was very unexpected. And the question is, how much returns did we borrow from 2017 in the back couple of weeks of 2016? With the new administration, do you oh, actually let me pull back with the um, the post election rally? Is that something that obviously a lot of people, some people have even attached the word euphoria to it, and obviously very bullish at, at the very least. Um, and would you anticipate that continuing for much longer? Do you think it'll pause then pick back up, or what does your gut tell you there? Well, I think it's going to be sector specific because there's a lot of sectors that ran up obviously too much. Perfect example is some infrastructure stocks. You have names like United Rentals that went up 50 percent in in a few weeks. And even if the new administration gets a large infrastructure bill through Congress on a timely basis, we operate in a environment in the current time where it takes years, if not multiple years, to get through the local, the state, and the federal environmental reviews before you can even green light a project. So it's great if the bill passes, but the actual funds and actual work beginning probably isn't going to happen in 2017. Probably isn't going to happen for the most part in 2018. That's Even the previous administration, with their $800 billion stimulus plan, found the same thing. And they even eventually admitted there just wasn't enough shovel-ready jobs in it. So it should be a moderate positive, but a 50% jump based on a new administration, I think that's where you have vulnerability in that sector. Whereas, you know, some of the financials have run up 20%. That's probably fair. Uh, you're going to have a more benign economic uh, regulatory environment. You probably have better economic growth prospects. And very importantly, interest rates have gone up. And for banks and insurance companies, that's very important for their earnings. Uh, So that's probably a fair uh, jump compared to infrastructure, whereas I think the ones that are sustainable right now are biotech and pharma, simply because they've been in a bear market or underperforming the market for almost 18 months. And their collective valuations are as low as they've been for five or six years, especially among the large caps. And they're going to have a more neutral a regulatory regime than anyone could have dreamed about before the election. Well, because obviously a lot of the <clears throat> campaign talk regarding um, overpriced drugs and gouging and things along those lines, do you anticipate pretty much all of that to disappear? I think there's going to be some industry self-regulation, and I think the current president will use Twitter uh, to browbeat certain companies, just like he's doing with trade. Uh, so you might have a hiccup based on a tweet. But the fact is that so far his nominees to head the government health agencies are probably some of the most free market uh, people there are out there. So I don't think there's going to be any kind of price 
fixing or additional legislation there. Now, I do think in the healthcare that the hospital stocks and the insurance stocks are going to be very vulnerable because no one knows whether the Affordable Care Act is going to be repealed and replaced, repealed, what's going to come after. Uh, there's going to be a lot of trial balloons. Those parts of the healthcare market are going to be very volatile in 2017, especially the first six months of the year. That we're kind of uh, this next question I have lined up is how are you positioning yourself for the start of 2017? What are you excited about? What are you concerned about? You think you just hit on a few of those just now? Anything you want to add to that? Uh, I think overall the market is fairly valued, you know, on a you know neutral basis, and you know I could even say slightly overvalued because I think we did ball some of the returns. Uh, on the enthusiasm off the election uh, for next year. I think biotech and pharma are uh, definitely undervalued after uh, 18 months of vast underperformance. They remind me very much of the energy sector coming into last year, where it was universally hated. They both had about a 40% decline from peak to trial. Uh, so I think there's upside there. I think some of the domestic small caps will do well uh, because we're going to have much faster domestic growth than development economies, and they're not uh, exposed to the strong dollar, which is now at 14-year highs, like some of the multinationals like IBM or McDonald's are. Uh, also, any kind of tax reform uh, should be positive for them as well. Uh, but there are some overvalued parts of the market, uh, which we've discussed infrastructure probably too fast, too quick, uh, uh, too soon after election. Also, the uh, yield stocks that people piled into uh, before the election, uh, like consumer staples and utilities that have very little growth, but still selling at 19 to 20 times earnings in a rising interest rate environment are probably... <laughs> The ironic thing is they're defensive sectors, but they're very uh, highly vulnerable to uh, significant pullbacks in my mind. Interesting. Well, and some of those defensive sectors have been put, they've been poured into so much because they are defensive or they do have good yield that well, people ironic. are chasing the yield in a low interest rate environment. Right. You know, six months ago, the 10 year uh, treasury yield was just over 1.3%. Now it's just around 25 Uh but a lot of people will chase risk that had no business chasing risk. These are basically cute on clippers that used to their certificate deposit. They had nowhere else to go. Right. And ironically, it makes some of those less risky investments more risky because of being run up as much as they are. Yeah, exactly. So is there a specific investment that you currently have the highest hopes for? I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from the DIY Investing Summit. If you want to hear the rest of the interview and the other 24 interviews from the summit, be sure and visit DIYinvestingsummit.com. That's DIYinvestingsummit.com, or you can click any of the links in the article or show notes to this um, episode, and it'll take you straight to the registration page. And remember, the summit begins Monday, January 23rd. You can still register after that, but you'll miss some of the content. So register by Monday, January 23rd at DIYinvestingsummit.com, and I'll see you there. The information and opinions contained on this podcast are for educational purposes only. The information does not consider the economic status or risk profile of any specific person. The information and opinions expressed should not be construed as investment trading advice and does not constitute an offer or an invitation to make an offer to buy and sell securities.